speaking no, to no, him. No, no, no. We didn't speak about a, a presidential pardon. I got his number, yeah. and then I called him. We spoke about other things, and then we agreed we'll make time to meet. Other things like what? No, no, our things. <laughs> it was a private call. Okay. Yeah. So when And then I did cattle. The ANC went on January 8 in 2013. That Sunday, I can't remember who did the article for City Press, came to interview me. I don't know if it's Jaffet or what. Came to interview me in my farm. I now accepted my fate. I left. I'm doing farming. I'm no longer. My interview is about what is your next life? You no, know, you can look at me. I'm in the farm. I'm farming. I'm yeah. okay. Politics is not for me. They don't want me. ANC tradition is such that that Sunday of January 8, all front pages are ANC. But that day, front page was me with the cabbages. Your cabbage. And that thing irritated Praveen. <laughs> Why is, is he still having a farm? Why is he still having a farm? Then they came to take my farm. Mm -hmm. And then invited me back into politics. That's why when a person says to me, uh, no, they say I'm what? This thing they always say. Uh, Flip-flop. No, they, they're like a, pro, this, uh, a prophet of a church, like cult. Cult, yeah. Cult. yeah, yeah it's, a cult. That. it's a cult. Yeah. A cult that goes home. Because a cult would have moved from the ANC and said, follow me. Hmm. I've never been a cult. I left. And I didn't live with anyone. I never said to anyone, let's go and form a political party. I left and went to do farming. That's the reality of the situation. Now, you take the farm. That is the second thing I know. By doing that, then you invite me back into politics. That's why I'm back here. Have, so, have you forgiven Cyril? If, if next I've year forgiven everyone. you can work with him. I, I, he's a crook. I, I can't work with him. <laughs> oh, oh my God. All right, let's no, just. But you didn't I, answer my question on leadership. No, I I'll relate, do a follow up. I'll do I, a follow up. I, no, no. I relate with all political leaders. I, President Mbeki, I've got a very good relationship with him. Um, at any time, I can take a phone call, call him and go and seek guidance on this or that. He does the same. If he, there are issues that he needs, uh, clarity from the EFF, he makes a call uh, and invites us. The same with President Zuma. I miss President Zuma this Monday when he was leaving to uh, Russia because we had our own war council. President Mutlante and all political leaders, and I'm one person when I've got an issue with any leader, be it Steinezen, be it uh, General Olomesa, Musi, or anyone, I take the call and I make a call and I sell my views. Uh, they can reject them, but I'm not shy to express them. All right, I've got so I've got a relationship. Yeah. I need to hand from the News 24. Uh, what did President Sol Ramaphosa say to you yesterday when you asked him for the presidential pardon for the pres for former President Zuma? Did you end up speaking to no, him? No, no, no. We didn't speak about a, a presidential pardon. I got his number, yeah. and then I called him. We spoke about other things, and then we agreed we'll make time to meet. Other things like what? No, no, our things. <laughs> it was a private call. Okay. Yeah. So when, so when do you envision, and what is the case that you're you going to make to the, to the president? No, 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 and no. What? I, I've not made that call because yeah. um, the judgment is not what you guys are saying. The judgment says the Department of Correctional Service must still make a decision. Sure. So I can't go to president and say, talk about a non-existing uh, uh, decision. But you would. But if he gets, if they say he must go back, I will go to him and argue my case with him that the guy is sick, the guy is old, his struggle credentials, his service uh, to the public office, and the fact that he served time in prison, mm -hmm. and the fact that parole on its own does not mean you are free. You are still continuing to serve, even from outside. It's enough for you to give him a presidential pardon.
to avoid a possibility of instability mm -hmm. which was experienced yesterday. I, I just have one very quick question. Yeah. You, uh, you face a lot of criticism at the State of the Nation address when the EFF, you know, pounced the stage with President Sal Ramaphosa uh, was addressing the nation, and and there was there's a sense of fatigue in society about the EFF sort of taking this kind of violent uh, uh, positions, uh, you know, whether it's storming stores or the, that type of thing, and we saw it, you know, you've done it many times at State of the Nation Address. You are 10 years old now, like you're saying, you can pick up the phone and speak to President Ramaphosa. So there seems to be a disconnect between the political maturity that you have when you engage with political leaders and then what the theatrics that we see on television uh, and what South Africa sees. Can you just reflect on that a little bit? Thank you. It's a protest and it has got no formula. If you have not been to the picket lines, you will know that protest you will not know that protest does not have a formula. Parliament is the highest stage of protest. When I climbed on the stage, I carried with me a placard, and I was going to silently protest on the stage. It is permissible, it is allowed, for as long as it doesn't have the party logos. But because you want to de de define uh, how people should protest, you have a problem with how the EFF protest. I can talk to President Ramaphosa on the phone. Uh, I can greet him on the phone. I remain an opposition member. I've got my right to still protest. Uh, 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 and that's maturity of politics in South Africa. There's nothing violent about that. Um, and, and in most cases, once the EFF does what we did in Parliament, you are guaranteed to see another parliament, another parliament doing the same thing that the EFF did. You need to ask yourself a question. Which rules did they break in parliament? If we have not broken any rule, why do you have a problem with that? We are still members of parliament. We are not charged. Because there is no rule we broke uh, in parliament. And then... Uh, uh, once there's no violation of the rules, you can't say, no, it's a problem. I mean, the other day I said, uh, in the EFF, we encourage people to donate uh, 95,000 below the threshold. And then the journalists call around, yeah, why? Why do you do what you are doing? And I said to the spokespersons, tell them you are not violating any law. You are saying to people, comply with the law. If you say on a 120 zone, Floyd, drive 119, why would the traffic cop stop me and ask me, why are you driving 119 on 120? So they just, even when you do something that is illegal, because it comes from your mouth, they want it to sound like it's illegal. If John Stein hasn't had done that thing I did, these questions were not going to be asked. So, John, even after that day where we now resorted to taking up the placards, and it is because they said no one is going to speak now. It's done. You're not, then we decided, okay, since you're refusing us to speak, we take out the placards. We're going to protest in silence. Then they pushed us out. What happened? Which media wrote about John Stainers and speaking after people were chased out, told not to speak, and they insisted on speaking? John spoke. You know what saved John? The color of his skin. You look at how the ANC treats the DA in parliament and treat the, the EFF. John, if he does the same thing that they said we can't do, they dare not touch them. They love their whites like that. <laughs> you can see a coalition in Johannesburg. Are you happy with that, that, that mode? People are, are, are a bit nervous that it looks like you guys, between you and the ANC, you are toying with Johannesburg, giving mayors who don't know what they are doing. We are now on mayor number God knows what, right? Uh, and then you've got one now who's hiding, never wants to talk to anybody, uh, you know, under your watch. You know, summary there, what is the, what is the rationale? Why couldn't you just get either from, from you or ANC to take the mayorship? Because it looks like it's now a joke. Well, I think you are unfair. 
and uh, you, you are judging people harshly. He's a counselor. You don't start by the mayor. He's a counselor. And for you, commander. Yeah. For yes. you to be a mayor, you must first qualify to be a counselor. Yeah. And then once you are a counselor, you qualify to be a mayor. Yeah. So instead of you guys talking mayorship, why are you not talking removing him as a counselor? It is the people's will that yeah. have put him in the council. It's not the EFF, it's not our it's not our member. We voted for him in the council because... But is he the best foot forward? You've been talking about qualifications and competence and what? the best foot forward. The problem is that his leadership style is not yours. We lead differently. When our race are in. <laughs> when our race. So he's got his own way of doing things. He goes to places... He, he, quietly. Firstly, yeah. he gave... He's leading quiet. No, he gave... He gave the acceptance speech. Yeah. And for your information, he's smarter than the one that left before. Yeah. 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 Very articulate. Yeah. And very knowledgeable about local government. And then he will visit pro uh, uh, projects uh, of the municipality, not with these uh, road shows and uh, too many yeah. convoys. And, no, mm. it's a different kind of a cadre. Who, but he's there. Uh, he's available inspecting the uh, project. So you have confidence in him? That's why we elected him. That's why we elected him. So um, 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 there are a lot of people that are yeah. your favorites yeah. who, who, who don't speak. Uh, and uh, we never get to hear accountability from them. And you guys don't take them on. One of them is Jamnandas. I mean, Jamnandas can disappear for, for months four on months end. and then the state-owned enterprises are collapsing yeah. under him. But yeah. no one has ever said Jamnandas is a bad leader. No one knows where the guy is. No one. But there's never been a story. But this one of the same color with me, yeah. because of our color, we are judged differently from other people. But the guy is there. Yeah. And Look, the day he was supposed to answer questions, he even collapsed. He, he, got, he got sick. He got yeah. sick and he was rushed to the hospital. Not because he didn't want to do his job. Yeah. But Jamnandas didn't collapse anyway. <laughs> and we don't see. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the CIC of the EFF. Okay, I'm going to give you my well, colleagues. Who wants to start? Let's start in this table here. Remember the rules, guys. So, so I'm giving you time. You ask your follow-up questions. The CIC will respond immediately before we move on to the next person so that it can become more of a dialogue rather than a long-standing thing where he'll answer at the end. Oh, okay. Well, thank just introduce yourself as you start. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, it's uh, Mzondi Limbeji from the SAPC. Um, Mr. Malema, the... There has been a number of... As you start. Okay, thank you very much. Um, it's uh, Mzondi Limbeji from the SAPC. Um, Mr. Malema, the, there has been a number of events as well in the country currently, um, especially <laughs> during this month of July, um, I think two years ago, uh, around this time. Yeah, it was bad. Mm -hmm. So, and the reason was obviously, I think it was related to the incarceration of the ex-president. So we saw a judgment, was it a ruling? I don't know how you, yeah. Which basically said, um, uh, I think when all is said and done, he needs to go back to prison. So given what has been happening, and some of those sporadic incidents around the trucks, you know, so I'd, I'd, I'd want to hear your view around those matters. And then of course, on the Mkwebana thing, you issued a very strong statement, um, also following what the Constitutional Court has said. Just uh, perhaps oh, that uh, response on that one before I follow up. Look, the Mkwebani judgment is bad. It doesn't matter how you look at it. <laughs> President Zuma was told he cannot appoint the head of the commission of inquiry because he's implicated. That's how Zondo was appointed. That part of the things that are going to be investigated by this commission that we're seeking to establish are going to implicate President Zuma, and as a result, 
He can appoint a judge of who's going to preside uh, the, the commission. Today, Ramaphosa can remove a person who is investigating him and says, I didn't know who was going to be the acting even when I, I it's not true. He knew who was going to be uh, uh, the acting PP. There is a deputy uh, uh, PP uh, at that level. Kaleka was a member, I'm not saying he's a member, I don't know what is the status now. Galega led the ANC Youth League with us. And when we say with us, we're talking yesterday. And one of the questions this comrades, when they interview her now for this, they must ask her if she's still a member of the ANC. And if she says no, they must ask her, when last did you terminate your ANC membership? She was not just a member. She was a leader of the ANC Youth League in Khaute. Then left to even advise uh, Malusi Gigawa. Then you become an act and you exonerate a president and then from there apply for that position. Mm -hmm. The reason why they say that position is seven years is because you must not be influenced by the current leadership because they know you don't seek anything after that. She's seeking something. Mm -hmm. She was not supposed to be the one presiding over that matter if she knew that she's interested in becoming a public protector. Now she exonerated the president because why? She knows the president has got majority in parliament and is going to have an influence on who gets appointed as a public protector. It therefore defeats the whole purpose of having a public protector who is seven years old after taking these decisions will not apply for a job. Yeah. We have a crisis here. Mm -hmm. This needs to be looked into. A person has taken decisions now. He's yeah. now going back to apply. Mm -hmm. Does it mean it defeated the purpose of saying seven years to avoid you taking decisions in favor so that you can be reappointed? So the court that took a correct decision is the Western Cape uh, Court. The president was emotional. The president stood to benefit from that. We respect the decision of the constitutional court, but we disagree with it. We disagree with it respectfully. And uh, the decisions of the court are not uh, alpha and omega. No. We, why would we study law if we can't read these things and disagree with them and rewrite our own academic papers to demonstrate how wrong this judgment was? It doesn't mean we can't implement it. We simply do not agree with it. And two things happened. Galega, who wants to be appointed, exonerates the president so that he can be appointed. Mm. Maya, who's been nominated by the president, Something unprecedented. When he appoints the chief justice, he says, I appoint the chief justice and I will nominate Maya when this chief justice finishes his term. He must come to school on Monday yeah. with a small blanket. My yeah. son knew it's going to be so called you didn't even need on Monday. You didn't even need intelligence. Uh -uh. Yeah. My son knew that it's going to be called on Monday. Than Ramco. So you just needed the weather report. The old minister didn't know that there is whole front coming. <laughs> And the demand is going to be high. Yeah. He came here and said to us, in a two weeks time or so, he's going to bring 1,000 megawatts from Mozambique. Yeah. He said to us, he's going to plug the power ships. Where are they? We have a problem now. Where are they? Because he calls a press conference, yeah. talks, and then it ends there. In, Nothing in, in your rally a few weeks ago, you accused him of corruption. I mean, yeah. to put it bluntly yeah. and frankly. Right, and you even mentioned Dr. Anamo he brought Dr. Anamo Hoko yeah, into in the, the power ship. of a power ship, yeah. which she was not part of. Ramukhub and Anamo Hoko, yeah. Yeah. Is that still the case now? Is yes. Anamo Hoko part of that power ship deal? All of a sudden, Anamo Hoko, Ushe Jangkelela, power ship. Yeah. Asanga batamela mola anam hoko yeah. on the power ships. Motoba funa funa the power ship gave greatest wife. Yeah. Uba igwali mu greatest wife. Yeah. Ya bala. By Jian Twila by Fa a spook. Then 
Anamukogon came into the deen. When I finished there speaking, yeah. the messages I got from the people who are involved in the business of this electricity thing. Yeah. But thank you. We thank you very much because this woman is disturbing us. One of those people, uh, 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 Tembega, yeah. Mogai Tobi is representing them uh, uh, because they are in dispute with these people. Mm. So, so the partnership is, not, is can, not about we, to happen? We can, it will happen, uh, but you know what you need to know, South Africans, is that even when we are at the height of a crisis, these people still negotiate their way. Mm. And if they are not getting a potion, then, you don't then it won't go through. And, and I'm saying to them, at what point do we become patriotic mm. and let go? Let these people eat as long as our people can get electricity. At what point? The power ships were signed last year. We spoke about them this year in the State of the Nation address. If yeah. you listen to my speech, I said, these things can happen because the ANC politicians are fiddling with it. They have been approved. But they say, before we go ahead, we need our pushing. Mm, mm, mm. And, and, and you, are, some, uh, you are saying to me that culture you will break should you come to power. Because people see you truly as a, a continuation of that culture one way or another. To I'm, say, I'm not. Uh, are these people not going to eat? They're I'm, not going to have EFF linked companies eating? No, no. And what have uh, you? No, there will be EFF people who are in companies and all of that. Yeah. They must be. And eat. Uh, they, uh, not eat. Do their work. Uh, yeah. Can the must come and work here if it's not EFF people? They are also South Africans. Yeah. Let every South African who's got what it takes to work this country work it. And not on the basis of political affiliation. I strongly oppose that. Yeah. That no, we can't have this person as an HOD or DG because it's an uh, EFF or it's an ANC. What does the CV say? Yeah. Is this person qualified? Competent. Is this person patriotic enough to lead uh, this country? And before I look anywhere, I will look amongst the EFF people. Why? When ESCOM doesn't perform well, you don't say ESCOM. You are going to say, you see this EFF, EFF government. government. Yeah. When it suits Definitely. you, no, don't send your people. And then when they fail, the people that are not my people, you come and blame me. Eric Kwele Nam, Yegi Jile, Kiska Kwela Sopon. So, leadership development means the comrades that are qualified, who have been to school, who are highly trained in this field. And the ANC, what is painful about it is that it took a lot of comrades to school and trained them. Now they isolate them for political reason and factionalism. Final question.